Hey everyone, welcome to the video on analyzing graphs in equilibrium systems. Before you watch this video, I recommend watching the videos on collision theory, equilibrium systems, and also factors that affect the equilibrium, specifically the application of Le Chetier's principle. Graphs that involve changes in concentration of substances in the equilibrium system are very common exam style questions. Before we go through the graph, there are three key types of changes that you will normally see in a graph like this one and that is changes in concentration of substances, changes in pressure or volume on the system, and lastly, changes in temperature. Each of the changes has its own characteristic appearances on these concentration versus time graphs. We'll be using the Haber process, which is the synthesis of ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen to discuss the three different types of changes. Let's start by looking at the very beginning part of the graph, where the concentrations of the three substances are constant and not changing. This is a characteristic feature of the reaction at equilibrium. Recall that at a dynamic equilibrium, the reaction, that is the forward and reverse reactions, are still occurring, but because the rates of the two reactions are equal, the concentrations of the reactants and the products are not changing macroscopically. So we won't be able to tell any changes in concentration by looking at the graph alone. At T1, we can see that the concentration of nitrogen suddenly increases. Now, in these graphs, we often refer to these changes as a spike in concentration. The concentration, when it spikes, it can suddenly increase or suddenly decrease. If only one of the substances in the reaction increases or decreases suddenly, then this is likely to be an addition or removal of that particular substance. So for example, if the nitrogen's concentration suddenly spikes, this indicates that some amount of nitrogen gas has been added to the system. At T1, while the concentration of nitrogen increases, it's important to notice that the concentrations of the other two chemicals have not changed. However, afterwards, you can see their concentrations will gradually change until the system reaches the equilibrium again. When the nitrogen concentration increases, according to Le Chetier's principle, the equilibrium position will shift towards the right side in order to counteract the change, that is to decrease the concentration of nitrogen. When this happens, not only does the nitrogen concentration decrease, so does the hydrogen gas concentration. And at the same time, the ammonia concentration increases. This is exactly what we see right after T1. Concentrations of nitrogen and hydrogen both decrease, while the concentration of ammonia slowly increases. Another feature to pay attention to in this graph is that the nitrogen and hydrogen concentrations, they decrease to different extents. Precisely, the hydrogen concentration decreases by roughly three times the amount compared to the nitrogen concentration. This is because in the equation above, we can see that the stoichiometric ratio between the nitrogen and hydrogen is one to three. So every time one mole of nitrogen is being consumed in a reaction, three moles of hydrogen are being used. At the same time, this will produce two moles of ammonia. Now let's move on to T2. At T2, the concentration of all the three gases suddenly increase, as you can see, by the spiking appearance of the graph. When concentrations of gases suddenly increase or decrease at the same time, this indicates a change in pressure or volume. When the concentrations all increase, this is an increase in pressure or a decrease in volume. Vice versa, if you see the graph and all the three concentrations will decrease instead, that will suggest a decrease in pressure or an increase in volume. So in this case, if the pressure of the system increases, the equilibrium will shift towards the right side as there are less moles of gas, 2, versus 4 moles of gas on the left-hand side. By shifting the equilibrium position to the right side that has less gases, the total pressure in the system is reduced, which is the opposite to the increase in pressure that we previously discussed at T2. Similar to before, when the equilibrium position shifts to the right side, the concentration of ammonia, as you can see, increases gradually, while the concentrations of nitrogen and hydrogen gas both decrease by the proportions that are indicated by their stoichiometric ratios. And of course, these concentrations will continue until the reaction reaches a new equilibrium. 
at T3, we don't see any of the substances experiencing a spike in concentration. However, they do all gradually experience other increases or decreases in concentration. This type of appearance on a graph is characteristic of a change in temperature. We can see that the concentration of hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas are both increasing, while the ammonia gas is decreasing. This means the equilibrium position at T3 has been shifted to the left side, causing an increase in reactant concentration and a decrease in ammonia concentration or product concentration. Since the forward reaction is exothermic, then we know the reverse reaction will be endothermic. To shift the equilibrium towards the left side, that is the product side of the reverse reaction, we need to favor the endothermic reaction. So that means we have an increase in temperature. Just to summarize, at T1, we are increasing the nitrogen concentration by adding some amount of nitrogen to the system. At B, due to the fact that all the concentrations are suddenly increased, this is a change in pressure, precisely an increase in pressure, or a decrease in volume.